Hi, my name is Taisha Charles, and this is my presentation on my summer acre titled Counting Variations of Knights and Knaves Puzzles. So the first question you may be asking is what is a Knights and Knaves Puzzles? Dr. Shelton and I worked on the classic disjunction and neutral versions of this puzzle. The classic variation is a variation where you get a puzzle with and trolls asking you to answer a riddle. And basically you just have to answer which of them are knights and which are knaves. An important note for this puzzle is that n can be any number. Um, in this example there's three trolls so you would say that n equals three. And the knights are trolls that only tell the truth whereas knaves are trolls that only tell a lie. So you have to figure out um, which ones are truth tellers and which one are lie tellers. So in this example where one troll one says only one of us is knave, troll two says two of us are knights, and troll three says all of us are knaves, which of them are knights and which are knaves? Now this may be a little bit hard to guess at first glance, so something that Dr. Shelton and I realized early on was we could simplify it. So statements are originally made of the form x of us are knights or x of us are knaves. And you can simplify all of these statements to state the number of knaves because if there are n trolls in the puzzles and two of them say that they are knaves, then n minus two obviously are who are they are saying are knights. So you have the original puzzle to your left, and if you swipe, you'll see um, the exact same puzzle, but simplified. So instead, we would have a puzzle where troll one says, two of us are knights, troll two says, two of us are knights, and troll three says, none of us are knights. And in the simplified version, it is a lot easier to see that the solution is that troll one and troll two are the knights. Um, something that we also realized really early on with solutions is that solutions are always of the form that if X of the trolls say X of them are knights, that is a solution. So in this example, we have two trolls say that there are two knights, therefore that is a solution. Next, we have the disjunction version of this puzzle. Um, so this one can also use simplified statements. Um, and the statements of are, are of the form x of us are knights or x or x plus one of us are knights. So we do have an example problem to show you. Basically, troll one says two of us are knights. Troll two can say one or two of us are knights. And troll three can say none of us are knights. And in this example, once again, there is the solution that troll one and troll two are a knight as well as the solution that just troll two is a knight then we also have the neutral version which cannot use simplified statements and in this version you add the possibility for a troll to be a neutral and neutrals are trolls that make vague statements that are sometimes true or sometimes false and we do also have an example um, in this one troll one says one of us is a knight and troll two says one of us is a neutral. And the solution for this one is a lot more complicated, but it could be anywhere between the troll one is the only knight and troll two is simply a knave or a whole mix of other things. So where did this research originate? Um, we actually originated the research off of another paper by Levins and Roberts. Um, and their paper was kind of the first one that we saw talking about these puzzles. And they were able to just talk about the classic variation. They identified the puzzle count and the solution count for a classic variation of the puzzle. Um, and they also left questions at the end of their uh, paper, kind of labeling things that they realized were gonna be a lot more difficult to find. And this included how many entral puzzles have no solution, a unique solution, or multiple solutions. So what did we find? Um, I like to describe it as a lot and a little. Um, thankfully, we were able to find a lot of the things for that Levins and Roberts uh, questioned. However, it was not that simple. Um, so I do have this little table over here kind of labeling what we found depending on the version of the puzzle. Um, thankfully for the classic variation, it was a lot easier to find um, these ex expressions. But for the disjunction and the neutral, we started to realize that these expressions got very long and a lot more complicated as we went on. So for the classic variation, um, these are kind of all the expressions we found. Um, puzzle and solution count, as I said, were already um, expressions that were found with Levin's and Roberts paper. So I'm kind of going to explain how this is read in a little bit. 
but we also have the puzzles with no solution and puzzles with a unique solution and very important note both of these expressions are only working for when n is less than seven so these expressions only work up to six trolls in a puzzle but um, this is kind of more of an in-depth explanation of how it works. So this is the puzzle with no solution, and this has three parts. So the first part is one half, two n, choose n. And this represents the number of puzzles with a none of us are knights statement. So the uh, section that is read two n, choose n, as I stated earlier, was the number of puzzles. So how this was originally created was from a different um, kind of expression that originally stated i believe it was um 2n plus one uh, uh sorry n plus one and this statement of n plus one actually tells you the number of statements that a troll can say in the classic variation they can say zero um so if you had a puzzle with three trolls they can say none of us are knights one of us is a knight two of us are a knight or three of us are knights that is four statements, therefore n plus one, and it does go on like that continuously. So originally that would be a multi-choose statement, and it is simply simplified to a choose statement so that it can be better quantified. So you had n plus one choose n, multi-choose n, and that simplifies to two n choose n. So you have that, um, one half, two n, choose n, which represents all the puzzles with a none of us are knight statement. Dr. Shelton and I realized that the only time the classic and disjunction variation puzzles had no solution was when at least one troll stated zero of us are knights or zero or one of us are knights. Then we subtract by the total number of solutions in all of these types of puzzles. Um, something that was very confusing for Levins and Roberts at first was the idea that the puzzle and the solution count was the same. And what they realized was because there are puzzles with no solution, there are also puzzles with multiple solutions. So this expression over here, which is the sum from zero to n minus two of n plus k minus one choose k, actually counts every single solution in all the puzzles that have a none of us are nice statement. And we subtract by these extra solutions. So all the multi-solutions are then subtracted. And what uh, the kind of total that's in the brackets what that gives you is the total number of puzzles with at least one solution where one troll says none of us are knights and you just subtract that by the number of puzzles and you're left with a number of puzzles with no solution and then we have expressions for our neutral and version and our disjunction version. Once again, you got the number of puzzles. And if you look at the disjunction version, it's kind of easier to understand what I was saying earlier with the multi-choose uh, statement becoming a choose statement. So um, originally in the disjunction version, there are two n plus one statements that a troll can make. And you're choosing uh, the number of trolls in that puzzle. And then kind of the way it's simplified is by adding whatever is in the bottom of this true statement and subtracting one. So two n plus one, and then you add n, you subtract one and you get three n, choose n. So that's kind of just how that works. And then we have the um, number of solutions for the disjunction version, as well as the puzzles that have a that have uh, zero statements. These are just the number of puzzles with our none of us are knights um, statement. And if you look over back to the neutral version side, you'll see I kind of said that there's more terms on the next page, and there are a lot of terms on the next page. So if you look at the kind of first half of this page, we have the full equation for the number of solutions for the neutral variation um, of this puzzle. And each different part of this uh, expression counts a different kind of solution. So the first part is a um, all neutral solution. The second part is all the solutions that don't have knights in them. Then we have all the solutions that don't have knaves in them. Then we have all the solutions that don't have neutrals in them. And then we have the total number of solutions that have a mix of knights, knaves, and neutrals in that solution. So that's kind of that whole thing 
like written out and then if you look at the bottom half of the screen you have the number of no solution puzzles for the disjunction version and as i was describing with the classic variation we were only able to find an expression that worked up to n was less than seven because after that point you would just be adding more and more and more expressions and that's kind of the same thing that happened for the disjunction version but we realized it a lot earlier on that the higher the number of n the more you have to add and subtract and add and subtract um, another kind of expression that we found was the maximum solutions. Um, kind of to explain this, so as we, as I stated, a lot, some of the puzzles actually have more than one solution. And Dr. Shelton and I, while working on the no solutions expression, wanted to figure out just how many solutions some of these puzzles could have. Um, and we realized that it occurred with puzzles that have a higher number of trolls, but um, going back to the statement on how we found solutions, the X trolls say X of us are night statement is what helped us in actually evaluating the number of max solutions. So the max solutions can only increase by the number of trolls. And that's kind of just what we realized. So if there is one troll saying the correct statement, then that is one solution. If there's two trolls, that is two solutions. So you just kind of like add on as you go. And the little white cutout picture is that number line I created, like kind of mapping out, okay, with this number of trolls, like this is how many solutions you can have for that number. So if you kind of look at where um, 13 is on top, that means there are 13 trolls in that puzzle. And at 13 trolls in a puzzle, the highest number of maximum solutions is six, is how that is read. Um, and then these are kind of just those expressions written out. Um, so we were able to find it for all of these expressions for the classic version, for the disjunction version, and for the neutral version. And actually a really interesting thing that we realized with the neutral version was the multiple, the highest number of solutions always occurred in the same format. Um, it would always include all of the um, no night solutions. So it would include every kind of that solution, as well as the all neutral, um, the all night, as well as a night knave or a night neutral solution. So it was a very interesting thing that happened with that version of the puzzles. Um, the last thing would be where to go from here with this research. And obviously there are two options. Option number one would just be increasing the research. Um, so we could apply to conduct more research. We could continue working on these neutral puzzles and finding kind of more expressions for them. Um, another thing which we could do is work on normal puzzles. And what these would be would be adding a normal troll to the puzzle. And a normal is a type of troll who can tell the truth or tell a lie. They're different from neutrals in the sense that they do explicitly tell the truth or lie, but it would still be a lot harder version of the puzzle. Um, we could also just find more variations or find equations that would work for all n. So as I had put that boundary that this only worked for n was less than seven, we could kind of try to just work on increasing the number that that expression works for. Um, and on the other side, um, we could work on presenting this research. So I am scheduled to speak at the MOVES conference in New York from January 14th to 16th. So that's a really cool thing I get to do. Um, but also we could work on submitting a full paper to the College Mathematics Journal, which is originally where we found Levins and Roberts research. Um, and we could also apply to submit the max solutions formulas that we have to the online enc encyclopedia of integer sequences. Um, so that's kind of really cool things that we could get to do with this. Last, I would like to say thank you to the Albright Creative Research Experience, the ELCDC, Kim Justinson, and Matt Fotis, as well as my fellow Acre students, and of course, Dr. Sheldon for helping me alongside through this research. Thank you.